In this video, we are going to find all polynomials p and q with real coefficients such that p of x times q of x plus 1 minus q of x times p of x plus 1 equals 1. This problem is taken from the Putnam exam in 2010. I'm collaborating on this project with Beta Maps, a very beautiful maps channel that shares maps by creating eye-catching animations with Manum. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to both channels, and turn on post notifications. So suppose we have polynomials p and q that satisfy the given equation. A very natural thing to do is to replace x by x minus 1. So p of x plus 1 becomes p of x, q of x plus 1 becomes q of x, and we have another combination of polynomials that contain p of x and q of x with the other side of the equation still equal to 1. Then we can subtract the two equations and we have a combination of p and q that is equal to 0. We have the equation p of x times q of x plus 1 plus q of x minus 1 minus q of x times p of x plus 1 plus p of x minus 1 equals 0. Rearranging, we have p of x times q of x plus 1 plus q of x minus 1 equals q of x times p of x plus 1 plus p of x minus 1. Take note of the fact that neither p of x nor q of x are identically 0, because otherwise, either way, we will have the left-hand side of the original equation to be identically 0, but the right-hand side is 1, so it's impossible. Furthermore, p of x and q of x do not have any common non-constant factors, because otherwise, that common factor, say f of x, is going to divide the left-hand side of the original equation, which means this f will divide 1, 2. But this is again impossible. With these facts, rather than just saying p of x divides the entire expression at the right-hand side, we can deduce that p of x divide must divide p of x plus 1 plus p of x minus 1. This is important because we have degenerated the problem from two polynomials to one single polynomial. For polynomials in general, we can write it into this expanded form. Let's do this for p. If we write p of x in this way, p of x plus 1 and p of x minus 1 will look like this. Now we can see that the degree and the leading coefficient of the three polynomials are the same. So when we add p of x plus 1 with p of x minus 1, given that this sum is divisible by p of x, we know that this sum must be exactly 2 times p of x. So p of x plus 1 plus p of x minus 1 equals 2 times p of x. Now we arrange this equation into p of x plus 1 minus p of x equals p of x minus p of x minus 1. If we let r of x to be equal to p of x minus p of x minus 1, then we have r of x plus 1 to be equal to r of x. We know for r of 0 equal to a, where a is some constant, regardless of the value, r of 1, r of 2, r of 3, etc., all equal to a. This means r of x minus a has infinitely many roots, because all positive integers, in fact, all integers, are roots to this equation. The degree of this polynomial, as shown on the screen, is actually finite. So the only possibility that we can have both holding together is that r of, a, r of x minus a is identically 0. Now with this result, we can claim that p of x equals a s plus b, where p equals p of 0 is another constant for all positive integers x. This can be proven by induction. Again, for a polynomial of finite degree, to have infinitely many roots, we can say that it must be identically 0. So this means p of x must be as plus b for all x. Now using a similar argument, 
we can also say that q of x plus 1 plus q of x minus 1 equals 2 times q of x and hence q of x equals cx plus d where c and d are constants that means p and q are polynomials of degree at most 1 now we are very close to our final solution but we are not completely done yet finally we put them back into the original equation we expand the left hand side and simplify as last we will have bc minus ad equals 1 so we have come to a conclusion which is that p of and q have degree at most 1 but bc minus ad must equal to 1 this is our final answer i hope you enjoyed the video feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments do check out another solution to this problem at metamaths which solves this problem with matrices by clicking the link on the screen or that at the description below also don't forget to subscribe to both channels thank you for your support see you next time